soon-to-be-married Michael and Sarah are enjoying a picturesque road trip through the southern parts of the United States. Suddenly, they hit something invisible on the road, and immediately, a black muscle car begins to chase them. To escape this sinister hunter, they pull into an old-fashioned diner, and they are met by a strange group of characters. These beings know why they are being hunted. Can they escape their fate? Will anyone help them? Put on your driving gloves and let's find out. Sarah and Michael are on a road trip through the picturesque desert of the southern United States, Route 66. They're discussing their upcoming wedding and Sarah's relationship with her father, who they're going to visit. Suddenly, they hit something. There's no damage to the car and there's nothing in the road, but it was quite an impact. They look around, but it's pretty desolate for miles. Nothing but cacti and tumbleweeds. Sarah slips and notices a weird substance on the ground. It seems to be ice, but that's impossible because the weather is too warm. They decide to get back in their Kia and enjoy the rest of their road trip. A black car, a sweet Dodge Challenger, starts speeding up behind Michael. It tailgates him, though there's no one else on the road. Michael tries to evade it, but the driver keeps creeping up behind. So Michael speeds up too. They see an old diner up the road, the only building around. Michael veers off to the parking lot and is safe for now. Sarah is upset at her fiancé's dangerous driving and the two argue. There's no cell service, so they walk into the diner to use their payphone. There are only a few people inside and they look creepy. Michael's hungry, so they take a seat. At the table, Michael says that maybe they should wait to get married. Sarah's father is dying, and he'll want his remaining time spent with Sarah alone. Sarah retorts, you don't know my father. Michael says, we've been dating since we were high school freshmen. I know him well. Um, Michael, did you get left back every year? Dude, were you a 30-year-old freshman or something? The waitress comes by and comments how she's glad that there's some lively people for a change. Sarah looks around and gets the eebie-jeebies about the clientele there. The older couple at the table start to argue. The woman is saying her food is cold, but she doesn't want to leave. Odd conversation and rejecting goodwill clothes. The waitress gives them two quarters. She says everybody gets them and to spend them wisely. Michael plays a jukebox song, his own. It was a one-hit wonder he wrote for Sarah years ago and dances. The black car is back with a demonic driver. They agree to get their food to go. Michael asks to use the bathroom and the waitress makes some strange comment like it might be dirty because the busboy's job is to clean it. On his way to the loo, he misses the date on the photo of the staff. It's shining. The sinister man outside has weird metallic fingernails and fang teeth. He looks like a cross between Freddy Krueger and the Singer Prince. He shoots some purple rain across the wires on the electric poles outside. The busboy, Bob, comes out with their sandwiches. Man, I hope he washed his hands between the potty scrubbing and that food prep. Sarah gives him a big tip. He's touched by her generosity, and she states he reminds her of her dad, who worked hard all his life. Well, that was kind, but it's a bit humiliating for the guy. They take off down the highway. Sarah's now driving, and they hit something invisible again. Sarah is very distraught by this. She pulls over and notices this is the same place as before. The evil dude has a picture of Sarah with her father. He puts it in the sand with two quarters. At the diner, the waitress and Bob discuss Sarah and Michael with the manager. They have plans for them. He reminds them, we are here only to serve a purpose and cannot change things. The shabby looking girl offers to take care of them, whatever that means. To me, she seems high. Sarah is very upset because it seems as though they just drove in a circle. Michael tells Sarah to give him the keys. They're being followed by the black car again. Sarah refuses. 
she must go see what the man wants. When she arrives at the car, he rolls down the window, shows his teeth, and growls like a menacing beast. It was quite scary, but at the same time, I can't stop laughing. She runs and gets in the car and drives off silently. Sarah notices they're low on gas. She still hasn't described to Michael the appearance of Evil Man. They're trying to outrun the pimped up monster, but he creeps up behind at full speed. They see the diner again and they pull over. Sarah gets sick. Michael asks who was driving the car. Sarah replies, it wasn't a person and it's not going to stop till it gets us. Inside the diner, she asks for the payphone. Sarah puts her quarters in and dials the police. The female on the phone tells them the state troopers are coming, but they need to stay put for a few hours. Then we see it's not a female, but the manager speaking. Michael frantically tells the manager about the black car following them. The manager tells him to calm down. Michael screams how they need help, but the manager's reaction is odd. He just repeats back the emotion Michael is showing. The manager states, we were expecting you back because when you left, you took the wrong way out. You looped around. I kind of doubt it. They're on a Groundhog Parkway. Sarah returns and says the police told them to wait there. The manager is ecstatic about this and says, Perfect, why don't you spend the night here? He's very excited to have guests and he goes and tends to their room. The waitress comes over and takes their order. Sarah asks for more quarters, but she's only permitted two. The weird girl frantically says she can have hers. Sarah looks through her purse for some change, but no, no, the woman tells her she can't spend those. The manager comes over and pulls her away, saying he's really sorry. He states she's a regular there, so they take care of her. Sarah calls her father and he answers, but he keeps saying, I can't hear you, and he's coughing and gasping. She keeps shouting into the phone, then just hangs up. The manager leads the crazy lady to one of the cabins. Welcome to the Hotel California, such a lovely place. But she's crying, saying, I don't want to go. I'm not ready. She tells the manager, you think you're safe because you feed this beast. He throws her into room 17 and backs away. Sarah and Michael finish their meal and Bob comes over, saying their room is not ready and puts the bill on the table. It says, run, but the manager grabs it before they see it. They both feel the place is super creepy, and I would agree but they are going to stay there and rest. The manager is showing them their room, the honeymoon suite. Sarah asks if they've ever seen that strange black car before. He calls her Sarah and she's shocked he knows her name. Sarah sees an image through the glass in the room next door. It's the weird girl screaming. Sarah says they left something in the car. Uh, gotta go. The manager goes berserk, begging them to stay, and knows both their names. They take off in the car. The waitress and Bob ask, why don't they just help them? But the manager is very angry and says, they'll be back. Sarah sees the sinister man on the side of the road while she's driving. They know they'll never get anywhere, and the diner people are in on it. Bob pleads with the manager to do something to help the couple. The dead and dying, he says, are not our call. Bob uses the payphone and it reaches Sarah's phone. She answers, hearing static and groaning, saying, run. They hit the nothingness in the road again, but decide not to stop. Sinister man is back. They just keep going, doing things differently, trying to beat the sinister man. When the challenger gets close, Michael breaks and decides to do a 180 and go the other way. Time is not changing, so they keep driving and driving. After perpetual hours, they decide to switch things up a bit and walk. They head out, trekking across the desert, trying to escape their fate. Michael and Sarah are walking when they see something up ahead. They run to it, and it's their car. It's been in an accident, windshield smashed and blood on it. Michael screams, we're dead. 
We've been in a horrendous accident, and this is our death. Suddenly, the sinister man catches up to them. Michael decides he's not going down without a fight. He gets the tire iron and walks over to Mr. Sinister, but the man uses his sharp nails to attack. Sarah takes him and they run off into the desert. They make it back to their intact car by going backwards on the path. They drive, but the Challenger is still right behind them. Suddenly, they're back at the diner again. They're in a loop. They keep passing the diner over and over again. They take the lesser of two evils and go in there for help. Sarah pulls into the diner and speaks with the manager. He says this is an in-between world. Cool man, good to know. The manager says she's actually bleeding out on the side of the road. And if she accepts her fate, Mr. Sinister will take her and Michael to the next place. The diner is a sanctuary that makes the crossover easier. A rest stop, so to speak. However, there's a second chance if one has something that they need to live for. Sarah is pregnant with a boy. The waitress speaks with Michael and he too is told to try his best to fight this. The manager can live forever. All the restaurant staff made a deal. However, they're all sick and tired of working for Mr. Sinister, who is actually death. They believe a mistake was made with them, since they will start a family and have so much to live for. Once night falls, the diner will no longer be a safe haven. Death can get them. Bob takes the Kia to distract Mr. Sinister and buy some time. Sarah runs back and passionately kisses Michael. The manager makes a call saying he truly believes this couple should live. I guess he's uh, talking to God? Bob is speeding down the road and is now facing the Challenger, heading for a head-on collision. As Michael and Sarah kiss, we flash to the accident scene where she wakes up with Michael near. I do believe they live happily ever after, getting their kicks on Route 66. That was pretty cool, but this version of dying seems pretty scary. What happened to the nice white light and the pearly gates? Also, what's up with those two quarters? Is it like you have to spend it on songs or a phone call you have to make? I think it would be really great if they had one of those tiny crane claw machines. The ones that you put your quarters in. And the big prize is to grab a box with the word life on it. Yeah, that would be cool. So what are your thoughts on this one? And if you had to pick a song on the jukebox, what would it be? Let us know in the comments below. And if you'd like to watch more on Movie Shortens, please subscribe to the channel to be notified about when our next video is posted. As always, thanks for watching.